day. You are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceto. Today we will show you the best of Legal HD as we celebrate our first year anniversary. Your, Your legal, legal counsel. counsel. In the last year since we aired I'm Legal Rod Contest, we featured some of your primary concerns when it comes to your legal rights. Gusto kong mangyari, kunin na talaga yung anak ko. Gusto kong lumaban, pero syempre, lalaki siya eh. Mas malakas siya kaysa sa akin. Nalaman namin na wala kami sariling meto sa tubig. Throughout the year, we help our viewers and followers online with their legal concerns. When should uh, landlords uh, raise their rental fees and sought the expert legal they advice of lawyers be. and professionals. In the case of Asian Transmission versus Court of Appeals. But no matter how serious the cases and legal concerns for our viewers were, we still managed to insert a few laughs along the way. I the hope legal... not. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to make sure. Now, as we mark our first anniversary, on Legal, legal Help Desk will be a one-hour program giving us more time to answer all of your legal concerns. been a year since we aired. Time flies, to buy Rod. I know, it seems like yesterday, I know it sounds cliche, but it seems like yesterday when we started our first show. And, you know, it's only been a year, but we've tackled so much. Yes, we tackled a lot of issues ranging from mm -hmm. personal to domestic, even work-related, mm -hmm. and even criminal acts such as these. Our Human Security Act of 2007, uh, terrorism is broadly defined. No? Mm -hmm. If you commit any of the acts uh, mentioned in the revised penal code, such as piracy, mutiny, mm -hmm. kidnapping, God, yeah, murder, kidnapping, and even serious illegal detention. Yes, yes, plus that, and also illegal possession of firearms mm -hmm. or crimes of destruction, mm -hmm. such as what is happening here. No, they they are illegally detaining people. Mm -hmm. Tapos they're also utilizing uh, explosives and also parang uh, siyatag na crime of destruction din yon. Mm -hmm. It can be classified as an act of terrorism subject to other two conditions. Mm -hmm. First, these acts must uh, sow the condition of extraordinary fear or panic among the populace, which is mm -hmm. nangyayari naman sa Sambuanga ngayon. Mm -hmm. People so, are panicking because of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the third condition is that uh, they are uh, asking for an unlawful demand from the government. What makes the anti-terrorism law more effective or powerful than if you charged, for instance, yung katulad ng hostage taking in Zamboanga. Because when you talk about the penalties, the penalty for the Human Security Act is 40 years imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Without parole. Huh? Without parole. Mm -hmm. And that would hold true for most of the crimes in the revised penal code, like murder, ganun mm -hmm. din naman siya, reclusion mm -hmm. perpetual, which mm -hmm. would also translate to 40 years. Mm -hmm. However, the Human Security Act actually is uh, uh, utilized more as a tool mm -hmm. by government uh, and police agencies uh, mm -hmm. so that they can capture these criminals, these terrorists, there are mm -hmm. uh, reliefs given which are beyond what you expect in the normal criminal laws or even mm -hmm. the constitution. Yeah, mm -hmm. one interesting thing mm -hmm. would be even getting custody of them. There is a provision in the law mm -hmm. you know, uh, that uh, you can adjudicate or declare a, an organization uh, uh, a terrorist group. Yes, a terrorist. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is the relevance of that? If you declare a group uh, a terrorist uh, group mm -hmm. or organization, what does that exactly mean insofar as that group is concerned? Well, the, firstly, there's a presumption no? yeah. that you're doing something illegal. And being mm -hmm. a member of a terrorist organization mm -hmm. is is deemed illegal because of that. Mm -hmm. Unlike okay. before, no, hindi naman na very, ano, because we have the freedom of assembly, of, of uh -oh. organization. This one, so if you're classified as a terrorist group, eh, pag nalaman na miyembro ka, you can... Yes, oh. Okay. This goes way back, 1954, may namatay na ng hazing. Yeah. Yes. But it wasn't as often ng 1954 to 98. It was increasing. Pero starting by 2006, 2012, every year may namamatay yes. sa hazing. Mm -hmm. So maybe we start with Attorney Enrico who talks well, about yeah. campus security. Why do you think yeah. uh, nagiging prevalent? Uh, almost sometimes it's a, it's a home factor. Uh, it's a home factor. Uh, how, they are, mm -hmm. how the experience at home uh, what the uh, what how parents uh, deal with their children mm -hmm. so some some of these students are look are looking for that sense of belongingness mm -hmm. and uh, especially now nowadays that the parents some of, most of the parents are away mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they are significant oh, parents. Mean working abroad. They are working yeah. abroad. Yes. And you so, mentioned this so earlier. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So when you speak to schools, ano yung tip nyo normally to parents to make sure that their kids do not join fraternities or quality, sororities that endanger their yeah, lives? I always tell them quality time matters. Mm. That whenever they have the chance, be with their children. Mm. Uh, take time to uh, to have a bonding with their mm. children. Sir, so, so you were saying uh, as, uh, earlier, um, you mentioned that as early as grade 7, yeah. uh, uh, they're already, they're already, being invited, yeah. they're already being invited to, to In fact, uh, uh, one of the exclusive the schools yeah. in Makati invited me to talk on fraternity because uh, these are boys in the grade 7 because recruitment in fraternity starts even in the mm-hmm. elementary grade, which is grade 7. Now, uh, okay. elementary and high school, sir, it, it, it is really uh, prohibited. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. meaning any any membership yeah. or any student who joins for, yeah. for frats. And I would uh, like would to, to 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 clarify that they have to check with the Department of Education because, uh, in my experience, I got told a particular coming from the Department of Education that paternity in the elementary in the high school is banned. Is banned. Yes. In they are uh, not allowed to join paternity in the elementary in the high school. Okay. Then. Other big misconception among people is that hazing is absolutely illegal or prohibited by law. So I think this is a good time, Attorney Reynolds, for you to clarify na pwede naman talaga ang hazing. Actually, hazing is not illegal per se. Mm-mm. So calling Republic Act 8049 uh, as the anti-hazing law is really inaccurate Mm-mm. because it only regulates the act of hazing. Yes. It is allowed provided that you will comply with the requirements under the law. Okay. So the law so defines hazing. Uh, when you will conduct your initiation rights, there must be notice to the school seven days prior to the initiation rights. The initiation rights must not exceed three days and there must be no uh, infliction of physical violence. Mm-hmm. So while in- hazing is also defined as the infliction of psychological suffering, what is punished under Republic Act 8049 is only the infliction of physical violence. This is something you can clarify para yung mga establishment owners out there can be very vigilant against hazing. Well, there are situations where uh, a person who's not uh, physically present during the initiation stage or the hazing will still be criminally liable if they allow their premises to be used with their knowledge that mm-hmm. the premises will be used for initiation rights and they allowed it and failed to stop the conduct of the hazing, then they will be liable also. If you're a stranger, you're not related to any of the member, you will be liable as an accomplice. Mm-mm. But if you're the parent of one of the members of the fraternity, you will be liable as a principal. Uh, meaning mm-hmm. kung sa bahay mo ginawa yung hazing, yes. uh, tapos meron na matay, yeah. then you can, you can also principal. be a principal. You're, you no? will be liable as a principal because that is very normal for parents who are also members of the fraternity to allow their homes to be the mm-hmm. venue for no, hazing. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts on, uh, you heard the case of, of Vanessa, she was yeah. abused. Uh, but just she, to be clear, yeah, yeah. the violation here, she could have even filed uh, a case under the vow seat, even before, before they got married, because she mentioned na sinisimula na siya saktan before they got married. Yes. So she can file a case of uh, physical abuse, mm-hmm. which is covered by Republic Act 9262 against her husband. Yes, mm-hmm. 9262 then, is yes. the violent, anti-violence against yes. women and their children act. Yes, and uh, as a remedy, she can, all, as long as the threat is there, she can uh, request for an issue once of protective order. Uh, kung temporary, pwede ito from the barangay. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, kung she can also request for permanent uh, protection order from the court. Kunwari sa case mo ni Vanessa, pagka patuloy siyang sinasaktan or yung I guess yung abuse dito even psychological na binabato siya ng plato kahit hindi pa siya tamaan the, the easiest way to get this protection order is to go where? Okay, uh, yeah, protection order the easy, well, the, the way to get a protection order is either through the barangay mm-hmm. or through the courts and tama ka no? I'm, um, uh, Karen, in your observation that it is really um, a, a fa- fast way to get a remedy and precisely that was the intention of the law mm-hmm. okay when we talk about violence against women we're talking about human rights violation that's happening most of the time within the home mm-hmm. within the context of an intimate partnership mm-hmm. so they don't no. have to be married they don't yeah. have to oh. be yeah. married yeah. like no. vanessa for instance you don't have to be married to be able to to avail of that remedy yeah. it's it's uh, enough that you ha- you are intimate mm-hmm. like that's the operative factor and uh, you know, dating relationship, mag on, no? yeah. mag on, mutual understanding. You so know, a casual, you know, a, a, casual, a casual tryst. You meet, you meet each other in a club, 
you go together and you have uh, something going on. Is that is that covered already? Something going on would be, I would say, sexual Pahong relationship. One night stand. Like a yeah, one night yeah. stand. Yes, yes that would yes, be covered. Even if you had just dated once. Mm. Dated once? Yes. Ah, wow. so guys, be guys, careful. Be careful. Because you're kasama dito stalking, di ba? Oh. So if you stalk your date, ako, you can be, <laughs> pwede kayo maging liable against this law, right? Ayan, I, I won't say naman that uh, this is something close to my heart. Because, uh, <laughs> so, Be, just because you've been a stalker Maybe before? I've been stalked or I was, I was the one stalking. Or a but, victim. But, uh, you know, at, at one point in, your, in everyone's life, whether you're a man or a woman, you, you, f you feel like you've, you've been stalked. And I think and, uh, now with the advent yeah. of social media, exactly, it is more, easier to stalk or become the victim of stalking, mm. right? Yeah. Yes. Because yes. even looking up information about someone else and watching them, what they do closely, that's, yeah. that's stalking, right? Yeah. The problem lang is that, is, you know, I guess what we need to uh, determine today, uh, Attorney Claire, is whether uh, it is a crime or what, what makes it a crime or is it just mm -mm. a civil, um, I guess, uh, cause no? yeah. uh, of, that you can file a case. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss the different aspects of that. First of all, uh, Maybe define what what or stalking is. Or let's start with yeah. Lynn. Yeah. Okay. With what happened well, to Lynn? Is that stalking? Well, um, it is stalking. You know, mm. um, as we define what stalking is, it's um, obviously the tricycle driver was um, giving her unwarranted and obsessive attention, right? Um, mm. Unwanted attention. And the definition of stalking is just that: it's unwarranted and obsessive attention given by one person towards another. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, the situation of, of uh, Lynn would not be uh, you know, criminalized because we don't have a stalking law, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, um, and there, there are several bills, I understand. Yes, there are, there are some, several some bills, bills um, pending since you know, several Congresses ago that have not been acted upon. Um, she can, however, use other laws mm -hmm. like, like for what's instance, the unjust vexation. Mm -hmm. um, which means, you know, which is criminal, uh, which, is, which is criminal, yeah. which means um, just uh, you know um, irritating someone without mm -hmm. just cause, and the penalty, however, is just um, one day to thirty days of imprisonment, and five, of imprisonment okay. five pesos, and five pesos to two hundred pesos fine. <laughs> five pesos to two hundred pesos so, fine. You didn't buy it, but at least imprisonment for one day to thirty days might at least teach the guy a lesson. Yeah. Yes, but you remember, Karen, that you don't actually with that kind of penalty, a person doesn't really mm. get to prison. You know, mm -hmm. they don't yeah. actually experience any prison time because mm -hmm. then they can just apply for probation or whatever. No, but where do you draw the line? Obviously, there are some people now, you know, Alaska lang, or maybe you have a suitor who, who really likes this girl and obviously, as, as they say, no, may, may chaga, may nilaga. so you, you, know, you mm -hmm. constantly try to, um, let's yeah. say, uh, approach the, the girl and, and, and try to win her heart and it might be construed as, as I guess, vexation or, or stalking. Where, where do you draw the yeah. line? I think when a woman says no, we have to have that um, presumption that she means no. No presumption, uh -oh. like what we have in our you know culture and tradition. No, no means pakipot. Uh, yes, So I think when uh -oh. it's really clear to a person that that, that the attention is unwanted, and uh, and it has been communicated in one way or another, mm -hmm. um, I think it has to be respected because we all have the right, you know, to freedom from all this you know harassment and disturbance mm -hmm. of peace you know mm -hmm. freedom to right to peace of mind okay. so no no at, at oh, Claire, i'd also like to ask because we said that we have no law on stalking but at least for those who are in relationships we have the violence against women yes. and children act which yes. actually has a very specific provision on stalking yes so maybe you can yeah. explain to our yeah. viewers um, um, ka oh, oh. Ang problema problem for, for instance si lynn no, hindi niya magagamit yung RA 9262 because RA 9262 or the Anti-Violence Against Women and Children Act applies only to people who have or have had an, an intimate relationship. Mm. Okay, so and then you All know, right. so you know, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or you, wife, husband, wife, mm -mm. or one night stand, mm. you know, okay. um, and even lesbian relationship is covered by RA 9262, so it applies, no? So if um, I had lustful thoughts, lang of you, in the, in the relationship, in the, in the, it, it I, can't, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> no, I, I'm no. just being very factual here. Yes, if yes. I had 
pagnanasa. Oo. Uh, um, like an I, artist tapi nagnanasaan, yeah, no? Yeah. Um, no, I, that would I not qualify. I can't make use of the violence against women. No, you cannot. Uh, There has to be a real, you know, intimate uh, uh, relationship prior or um, at present. I think we'd start off with uh, kind of the definition of, of theft. Uh, yeah. There is a legal definition, of course. Um, can you yes. kind, of, kind of run by the, uh, the elements of theft? Yeah, um, according to our law, specifically the revised penal code, there is theft when there is a taking of personal property with the intent to gain. Then the personal property belongs to someone else, belongs to another person. And then you took that personal property without the consent of that person and such taking was not attended by violence intimidation against a person or um, force upon things mm -hmm. so kunwari ako um, i'm in the office tapos si rod kinuha niya yung ako, ako. yeah kunwari expensive pen surreptitiously kinuha niya nang hindi nagpapaalam mm -hmm. that's theft yes uh, oh. assuming he had an intent to gain by uh -oh. taking that yeah uh, na wala intention of isolate yeah. talagang kinuha yes. niya from me that's yes, theft kung, pero kung niloloko ka lang niya wala yeah yun. but oh. here uh, i guess this is a good time for you to also make the distinction because you mentioned pag theft walang kasamang violence and yes. Uh, just recently, yung Martillo Ganga and uh, yung yes, nangyari sa isang mall yes. na yes, pagnanakaw, would that qualify as theft? For me, because as according to the definition I said earlier, there was force hmm. already uh, applied upon hmm. things, which uh -oh. in that case was the breaking of the hmm. glass uh, displays and which were protecting the jewelries inside hmm. the department so store. The For aspect me, of violence there. Yes. Uh, it's it's more of it the from... force upon that thing, and mm. for me, that falls under robbery already. Uh -oh. that, distinguishes, that distinguishes it from theft. Of course, one of the later things that you're going to do, or at least consider, no, is to file a case of theft. Yes. Kasi, um, a, pro a problem dito, I would imagine, attorney, not, is that you don't know, sometimes, more often than not, when, when it's not, a, not violence, not through violence, not through intimidation, not through force, it's normally surreptitiously yeah, done. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to file a, a case of, of theft in, in cases like that, right? Well, we can yeah. file it again sa John Doe, but mm. tulad nga na yes. sabi ni Major, ang mm. maganda talagang gawin dyan, kahit na hindi nyo naramdaman, nakuha na lang, nalaman nyo afterwards, you call the credit cards and then you file a report, you blotter, because there are some cases kung saan nahuhuli afterwards. Mm. Natit, mm. Kung di natisod sa'yo, sa iba natitisod eh. Okay. So kung nahuhuli uh, dun, pwede mong, uh, oh, uy, yun. siya yun, nandun uh, yung katabi ko yun sa bus. May mga, may mga things Now, na... The Jando will have a face. Yeah, I that's see. good. So, And also, rin, sabi nga ni Major, it na, helps them na. para alam nila kung anong nangyayari out there. Alam yes. nila kung anong types of modus operandi yung ginagawa and mm -hmm. kung gano'n ano siguro kadami. I wanted to ask that eh. Ano nga ba yung mga modus operandi na we should watch out for? Sa... Common. Yan sir, yung during may ano, ano sa divisoria niya sa mga tiyanggian diyan yung mga malalaking mall. Meron diyan mga nagpapanggap siya kunyari ano siya eh, uh, sales lady. Ka lalapit sa iyo yan, may mili ka lalapit biglang. Siyempre ikaw panatag loob mo na taga doon siya. Ngayon doon ka magbabayad. Mm -hmm. Doon ka magbabayad ngayon. Kala mo kasi ah, ano siya. Kasi nga naman siya ang eh, no, nakikipag-usap siya doon ano, sa may-ari. Yes. Uh -huh. Ito naman may-ari. Hindi naman niya alam na kala naman nung bayad. Pero yung salita niya yung oh, ma'am, yung ganun lang. Uh -huh. eh, eh, Siyempre, papao-o. Oh, mga, eh, mga nagtitinda kasi doon. Uh -huh. Kasi yan, may iba, mga Chinese, gano'n. Uh -huh. Papa, oh, ngayon ikaw, panataglo mo, kala mo kakilala. Ngayon, pag nagbayad ka doon, magugulat ka, wala na yung tao. Ngayon, sabihin mo, nasa na yung sukli? Magugulat naman yung may-ari. Anong sukli? Hindi eh, ka pa nga nagbabayad. Hindi, mm -hmm. binigay ko doon, yeah. kakilala mo. Hindi. Ah, okay. Yan, ma'am. Yan, number one. Yan, ma'am. Yan ang number one na ginagawa doon yan. Tsaka yung uh, babanggain ka, kunyari, iipitin ka. Tas, ayun. Marami kasi sila, ma'am, pag lumakad eh. Hindi lang sila apat. Tsaka ang suot nila, hindi na yung traditional na sinasabi na talaga mukhang goons. Talagang sila, mga naka-long sleeve. Ano talaga naka-long sleeve, ma'am. Tapos, mga mm -hmm. suot pa nilang bag, yung mga signature. Pero alam naman natin, imitation. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, yeah. siyempre pag, uh, kaya hindi mo pagkakamal ng salisi. Tapos, eto na. Pag lumakad sila, in group, lima. Mm -hmm. Merong isang, kung tawagin niyo ma'am, sa parlance ng pulis, bakero. Ibig sabihin nun, siya yung taga, siya yung kakausapin niya itong guard, yung guard. Tapos may kakausap dun sa sales lady, tapos yung isa may magtatanong. Tapos yung isa, yun na yung titira. Pag katira niya, may, ipapasa niya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, Tapos okay. lalabas yun. Kaya pag nahuli mo siya, walang ebidensya. Paano oh. mo naman mapoprosecute? Wala ka na kuwang ebidensya. Oo nga, yeah. Usually, a lot of people 
think that we have a law on medical malpractice, di ba? Pagka mm. nagkaka-problem yeah. sa doctors, parang they usually say, ah, magde-demand right. kami dahil yes. medical malpractice yan. Mm -hmm. But I guess this is a time for us to clarify. Meron ba talagang, mm -hmm. do we really have a law on medical malpractice in the Philippines? Um, I, I guess we should clarify that medical malpractice in itself is not considered a crime. Mm -mm. Under our legal system, I guess the public should understand that just because something is wrong doesn't mean it's unlawful. Mm -hmm. And just because something is unlawful doesn't mean it's a crime. Right. So there has to be a law that declares it as such. And unfortunately for medical malpractice, there is no law that defines it as an offense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the implication would be, for example, uh, if a physician is found guilty of negligence, he may be held civilly liable for payment of damages based on tort mm -hmm. or Article 2176 of the Civil Code mm -hmm. or criminally liable for reckless impudence based on Article 365 of the Revised Penal Code and not necessarily based on medical malpractice per se. So this so, medical act, do, do we have a medical act, right? Yes. Uh, that it doesn't cover anything about medical malpractice? I don't think so because it's more on the impositions of cert certain fine or disposition for doctors mm -hmm. for negligence on their part. Yeah. Yes. And so, I, I saw the Medical Act of 1958. This yeah. is what we're talking about. No? Parang it's more of the composition of yes. the board. Mm -hmm. And also, it even also exempts uh, students of yes. medicine and even nurses. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. really more for the qualification and licensing of doctors. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, recently, uh, the DOH made certain clarifications on this because certain hospitals are not being called now hospitals mm. Mm, okay. because of the lack of the facilities that are available. I see, ah, I see. Okay. In, in cases of res ipsa locator, where, where you, where the thing speaks for itself, where you, you left a, a glove inside there or, or let's Spine. say a scalpel, an uh, and it's, which, which has happened, right? There, 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 are, uh, there have been cases in the past where, you know, some uh, medical object was was left inside. Yes. Uh, the, still, the 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 course there is is still through uh, uh, revised penal code three six five yes. right? yes, or yes. Cri criminal mm. negligence or no. It's, so it won't be any or other, damages or damages. Civil damages. damages. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Pero ano siguro? Let me just clarify. Ano? Unless the injury itself is proof of negligence. Yeah. As you said, for example, nakaiwang ka ng instrumento sa loob ng katawan, you can basically dispense with the necessity to present an expert witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the court normally will rule in favor of the victim. Mm -hmm. But if that is not the case, I just would like to cite a particular case decided by the Supreme Court, eh, mm -hmm. which sheds light on the issue. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there was a doctor who was um, allegedly guilty of negligence and yeah. a case was filed against her and in the course of the proceedings they were able to find they were able to gather that indeed she was negligent for example the clinic was dirty there weren't enough equipment right. mm -hmm. to attend to the cases and in fact the facilities were not even sufficient um, assuming emergency cases will arise in, in the course of the operation mm -hmm. so clearly it seems that the that the physician is Negligent. Guilty of, of negligence. Mm -hmm. So a criminal case for reckless impudence was filed against her. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the Supreme Court had to acquit her because apparently the prosecutor or the prosecution was not able to present an expert witness. Mm. Ang That's sabi so kasi, really and, and, difficult and, naman, no? Yes, and oh. if I may say lang kasi, mm -hmm. people should understand kasi that the medical profession normally involves highly specialized skills mm -hmm. which ordinary people person or ordinary people could not basically comprehend or understand, not even judges, not even lawyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why a judge, for example, could not determine whether or not what has been done is tantamount to negligence. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why there is a need to present an expert witness. And if you cannot present that, then problema na. So that's mm -hmm. why we've been lobbying yeah. for a yeah. deal that will really define what medical malpractice is. We also introduced and explained some recently passed and signed laws by the president. Some of them quite controversial, no? um, the RH law, the anti-bullying law. No? So. And we couldn't have done all of that without the help of our guests. Mm -hmm. So maraming salamat po sa lahat na nag-guests sa amin. 
And now, let's show our viewers a short clip of what we learned when we tackled personal and family law cases. A lot of people mm -hmm. still really don't know what this law provides, even if some of them might be anti or pro. Um, basically, can you help us give the highlights? What people need to know about the law? What benefits does it offer? The RH law, or the Responsible Parent and Reproductive Health law, actually is a fulfillment of, the, of our commitment to the Constitution and international law. So the Constitution provides that the state has an obligation to its citizens to provide the right to health. Mm -hmm. And this includes the right to reproductive health. Under our commitment to the ICPD, or the uh, Conference on Population Development, we, it says there that reproductive health includes uh, not only the absence of disease or infirmity with respect to our reproductive uh, processes and functions, but also the basic respect for the right of the individual and the couples to decide without discrimination or coercion on matters concerning reproduction and their reproductive health, mm -hmm. concerning uh, their the timing and spacing of their mm -hmm. children, and uh, whether or not have children at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there's such a, I, I guess, a misinterpretation or a prejudgment on this law? And, so, uh, and thus causing this controversy. And w what, sh what should we say to the public um, uh, that, that will clarify all the misconceptions about this law? One thing I think that people often uh, have about, conceptions that they have about the RH is that it's all about distributing condoms, mm -hmm. making it available to everyone, and, mm -hmm. and violating the beliefs of other people Healthcare providers, for instance, who who do not believe in some of the services that are being made mm -hmm. available under the RH law would be forced to provide mm -hmm. those services. They won't be. Uh, people will not be forced to avail of services that are against their yeah, uh, beliefs mm -hmm. and uh, their religious or cultural beliefs. Healthcare providers will not be forced to perform services or dispense. Uh, services or contraceptives, yeah. if even it's if against it's public their health service providers. So, if uh, if it's public health, public uh, hospitals public, uh, yeah, they're uh, required. are required to mm -hmm. provide these services. Do you punish kids for acts of bullying? Uh, most, most definitely. Uh, to, to, to answer the question first, uh, the laws that we have now are inadequate hmm. to to address the problem of bullying. And with this bill, we hope to cover that, that policy gap. And uh, we're not going to, to penalize or uh, hail to, to, to prison uh, those kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, there will be graduation of, of penalties mm -hmm. as uh, dictated by the schools themselves. What oh, kind of, penalty, what kind of yeah. penalties are we talk, talking about? Like suspension? Uh, from or suspension to or expulsion yeah. to... Mm -hmm. uh, some probationary, probationary yeah. uh, and uh, other uh, other penalties that the school may, may think of. I think the mo the most important uh, aspect of this uh, this bill is uh, the the proactive uh, response to bullying uh, mm -hmm. by defining bullying and by informing the parents, the students, the teachers of what constitutes bullying everybody would be more conscious about their behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Senator, in this bill, is there a way for students themselves to report without having to go to the parents? Because I feel mm -hmm. that students normally are reluctant mm -hmm. to really tell their parents, especially kids. Yeah. So this is, does it have like a mechanism where you're required to maybe, if you're a school, to put up a help desk yeah. or some form of counseling? Yes, it's it's defined there the the mechanisms for reporting and uh, where to report, how to report. So the kids will be informed in the and the parents uh, themselves, and it will also encourage anonymous uh, reporting, mm -hmm. so that the uh, the suspected bullies can be observed by mm -hmm. the school authorities. And who determines who may bullying? Is it the school based on the definition mm -hmm. of the law? Because it can also be subject to abuse, na. Meron lang yeah, lang in iseo i report yeah, the, mo na yeah, for the tough part there is yeah. like for, for me for us before no? I mean we'd call someone I mean words like 
pandak, sakang, or you know, yung, you know, yung, we, we would, so we would uh, the have these terms of endearment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes you use the term endearment uh, with not, not knowing that we're actually insulting someone. But, but sometimes it, it, it just boils down to that. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just empty so chatter. So in that case, would it uh -oh. be the teachers who can tell, the, who will be able to have authority to say, this is bullying and therefore we can punish the kid? I think it's, it's uh, a little of both. Primarily, it will boil down to the threshold of the students right. themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they feel that uh, they cannot uh, or it, that uh, those teasing uh, would uh, cross the line mm -hmm. or their personal threshold, then they can report it as, uh, as bullying. But um, there are also provisions there for uh, anti-retaliation mm -hmm. and the for uh, false uh, accusers. Start off with the definition of, of cybercrime. Maybe uh, attorney JJ. Start okay. Off so, um, so cybercrime is, 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 I guess, is a, a group of uh, offenses, as it were. Uh, so, uh, it covers uh, traditional crimes that are committed using electronic uh, means. Mm -hmm. So, using a computer, using a cell phone, for example. This may yeah. be uh, fraud. You may uh, commit fraud, for example, using um, um, a computer or electronic uh, methods. Uh, another type of cybercrime are these completely new offenses, which are, com are are done entirely on the computer, such as hacking, for example, or what's known as a distributed denial of service attack, such as interference uh, with the operation of a uh, computer system. Uh, and yet another would be, for example, a content-related uh, uh, offenses, such as libel and intellectual property violation. Major J, in your experience, Date, were there crimes committed online or through technology? Technolo technological means before na nare-report sa inyo pero wala kayong ma-file na offense because nung wala pa tong anti-cybercrime law. Yes, ma maraming kaso talaga. Oo, Especially, like what examples? Ano especially po sa social offenses? media is merong laging nag-aawayan yan. Mm. So, katulad nga nung ina natin, there is a libel through the internet. Mm. So, <coughs> laging nag-aaway yung even, even best of friends. Yeah, but most, as of, those but, are most common. But as of now though, since it hasn't been enacted, uh, let's say yung may mga awayan and name calling or, or libelous comments yes. on on uh, on let's say social media, Facebook or Twitter, um, or maybe Instagram. What are the remedies uh, currently? Uh, yung wala pa yung, uh, Actually, on uh, the part of the PNP, the only thing that we do is, to, for example, the complainer will go to the office and we just request for the deactivation of the account the act immediately. Account. That's it. That's yes. uh, that's uh, no no. No, no filing of suits. No filing of suits for us of this. <laughs> okay. Well, right. Attorney JJ, hmm. na pag-usapan dito yung libel. We were talking about libel, but that actually is one of the most controversial provisions. Provisions, yes, in right. the anti cybercrime law because a lot of people were opposing hmm. yung anti cybercrime law precisely because of that libel provision, yung penalties attached to That's it. That's right. What's your take on that provision? So is it, it really it disadvantageous? Became, right, right. It became the focal point mm -hmm. of the opposition for yeah. the uh, cybercrime prevention law. Okay. Um, um, I mean, people were concerned, uh, obviously, because of there was double uh, liability. So you could actually focus a lot of the objections through the libel law. There was a section 19 which related to the takedown clause, which allowed the complainants to have the Secretary of Justice remove content uh, simply on the basis of a mere complaint, even without trial. So uh, libel, um, it was important uh, in, in re with respect to the opposition, but it's also important in another sense. And I think that one of the reasons uh, which caused Congress to include cyber libel in the, um, in the law was that it, it appeared that 75% or so of the complaints fielded by the PNP All and right. the NBI uh, cybercrime divisions mm -hmm. related to libel, mm -hmm. more or less so the most format. Of it talaga, most of yes. it talaga, no? it's, it's so it's social right? media, yeah, social two media people libel. fighting, yes. And, and mm -hmm. so I think uh, there was, it was necessary in that sense to highlight that problem. Unfortunately, there, were, uh, there was a lot of concern, particularly I think from traditional media, that uh, a lot of libel cases have been filed by public uh, personalities uh, as a way to stifle public discussion of issues. Mm -hmm. And so their concern was cybercrime or cyber libel will be used now as the new means of prosecuting uh, media practitioners. Okay. So I think that's what that sort of uh, mm -hmm. put the uh, momentum behind trying to scrap the uh, cybercrime prevention. Okay, that's very enlightening. Yeah. So a lot of people were confused. What is the libel provision? Why is it very controversial? Uh, what are the penalties that we're looking at here? Well, uh, right now with the TRO of mm. the uh, Cybercrime Prevention Act, our cybercrime law is basically uh, the section I think, 33 of the 
um, e-commerce act mm -hmm. which specifies the crimes of hacking mm -hmm. and uh, online piracy mm -hmm. and the penalty is, is common in both it's from six months to three years mm -hmm. uh, and a fine uh, I think minimum of 100,000 pesos uh, maximum commensurate to the damage cost so what you'll see immediately is that uh, because it's three years and less than the six mm -hmm. years if it's your first conviction, you qualify for uh, probation. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, cybercrime uh, cases, actually, if it's the first offense of the accused, they will plead guilty in exchange mm -hmm. for one count, mm -hmm. and then they immediately go into right. probation. So there's no jail time. But the anti-cybercrime law right now, if it goes into effect, yes. would you say that the penalties there are higher yes. and heavier? Heavier. Because a lot of the... Um, what they did was a lot of the penalties were either prison mayor, mm -hmm. so that's uh, 12 years and up, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I mean, outside, outside uh, the, the pro so, probation law. Right. Uh, can you explain to our televiewers the difference between adult concubinage and the elements? Yeah, that's a very good question because like what you said, that most, most people just, just mix up the two terms. But according to Article 333 of the Revised Penal Code, adultery is committed by any married woman who has sexual intercourse with a man not her husband okay. and by the man himself who has sexual or carnal knowledge sexual intercourse with that married woman even if the marriage is subsequently declared void yeah. okay. so that is for adultery hmm. for concubinage it's it's the other it's the other spouse it's so the, the, husband. the husband it's any husband yeah, yeah the husband who there are three modalities by which you commit concubinage. The first one is when that husband maintains or keeps. The, the actual word in the revised penal code is keeps a mistress in the conjugal dwelling or has sexual intercourse under scandalous circumstances with a woman who is not his wife or shall cohabit with, that, with a woman, again, who is not his wife in any other place. So right. outside the conjugal dwelling, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So, th so the first one, uh, adultery obviously is uh, committed by a married woman woman and the one she has sexual uh, relationships right. relations with yes and then the, the second one concubinage is yes. the, the yeah. husband the man yes under those three modalities right that's yeah. right yes. so it's I a think little tougher a, a little good tougher no? tip for our viewers out there for them to remember these two crimes the difference is that concubinage by just looking at the the name of the crime you can look at the root word it's, which means concubine right? yeah. so you have to remember that it's just not having like uh, a mistress or yes. having sexual intercourse with another woman but they have to be sort of like a concubine that yes. they live in the house where you also keep your wife right yes. that you cohabit with this woman mm -hmm. and what's interesting is the scandalous circumstances yes. yeah. what have, have there been any definitions by the court? What constitutes scandalous circumstances? There, there have been around, well, jurisprudential pronouncements would, would usually touch on three nuances of scandal. Number one is scandal, scandalous act, scandalous circumstances. But a common denominator among these three is that it involves some form of outrage on the part of not just public outrage, but more specifically within the neighborhood. Yeah. So there's this public outrage, the fact that they're seeing you with with uh, with another woman who is not your your wife and and I so it's like blatant but, but, but not, not just holding hands I mean I would imagine yeah. it's it's sexual intercourse in scandalous circumstances right so it has to be on top of a hood of a car or whatever <laughs> I mean I mean I don't know what how to define that but I, I guess I, I I say it because in in practical sense it's very rare that people will have mm -mm. Uh, sexual relations publicly. Right. In for those who, of course, have cheating spouses, mm -hmm. how do you file a case for concubinage or adultery? Well, let's start with let's start with the the possible evidence that you might want to include in, in the complaint. Well, by the way, a complaint, of course, is is an absolute jurisdictional necessity, meaning it, it, you cannot dispense with a written complaint by the offended spouse. So without that, of course, you, you cannot have your mom do it. You cannot have the fiscal yeah. do it. So it has to yeah. be the, yeah. either the wife or the husband, the husband. filing this complaint against the other person. That is correct. It's an person. indispensable pre prerequisite or precondition to filing the case. Now, you have your complaint. Of course, you, you, could, you could initiate that with, with the office of the city prosecutor. And full-blown trials don't happen there. You don't really appreciate evidence to that effect. But if, if you were to file a, a complaint before the office of the city prosecutor and you're filing your complaint affidavit, you might as well include, for instance, your, your own statements uh, your, within your personal knowledge of facts and circumstances 
that, that proved that adultery or concubinage had in fact been, commi mm -hmm. had in fact been committed. Now you could also resort to, to testimonial evidence or at least affidavits from, from other seen persons who have seen them together or who know of other facts, like they've, they've heard they were actually there within the, within the proximity of the, 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 the crime. And you could also include photographs, for instance, mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. attaching them to your complaint affidavit to mm -hmm. just beef up your complaint. But just to clarify to the, to the audience, of course, a full appreciation of evidence is done only in a full-blown trial. Under the family code, if a child is illegitimate, the parental authority is to be exercised by the mother, mm -hmm. especially if the child is under seven years of age. Made right. difference ba if uh, you have an illegitimate child, but some birth certificates, in his case, in the case of John, hindi man lang siya linagay sa birth certificate as the father, but some birth certificates write the name of the father. Kahit ba ilagay yon ng mother doon, if the child is illegitimate, the Custody, the parental authority still goes to the yes, mother? Yes, eh. that, that is why this should be best addressed to Congress because the law is very clear. Eh. Mm -hmm. If the child is illegitimate, it, the, the parental authority should be with the mother. Is that exclusive though? Is it the exclusive authority? And, and, and uh, in this case, uh, yung case study natin, what, he cannot exercise any kind of authority and thus not have, have any custody. Well, for the child. Uh, we, we must take into account that when you talk of custody, it is actually attached to the matter of parental authority. Yeah. Mm -mm. So unless the parental authority is taken away mm -mm. from the mother, mm -mm. then uh, uh, no choice but whoever has the parental authority will also have the custody. But Paano kung dalawa yung mga parehong may fault? Kunwari, you have a mother who merong grounds on immorality kasi meron siyang kinakasamang ibang lalaki or meron siyang boyfriend even if she's not yet an old. Tapos the father naman is known to be an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Ano yung, how does the court then weigh these factors to determine can kanino they, dapat Can they both lose? Yeah. Meaning, yeah. Can, well, again, uh, again, uh, it's, there's no hard and fast rule on this. Eh. But to my mind, and siguro suggestion na rin sa mga parents, let's not include the children. Ang away ng nanay at tatay o mag-asawa, ay away nila, hindi kasama yung mga bata. Yeah. So, uh, ang form, best formula dyan is, uh, they agree mm. on shared custody. Okay. And they ask the court to approve. Importante yung court and approval. Court Importante approval. Yeah. why. In one case, uh, walang court imprimatur yung agreement nila, and the child was less than seven years of age. So, uh, the mother effectively waived yung kanyang... Uh, maternal custodial right to sa bata. Later on, she questioned it. And the Supreme Court said that yung waiver ng nanay mm -mm. was, in, was, was invalid. Was in, void. Was void, yeah. Uh -oh. yeah so because, meaning binalik yeah. sa kanya yung uh -oh. custody kahit na hindi lang sa binalik before. kasi overtaken by events na sa kanya naman mm -hmm. din yung bata. Hindi siya na-forced na i-relinquish. Thus, you cannot enter into agreement where you're waiving effectively your parental, your parental authority. Right. Mm -hmm. Except, of course, uh, ako, it's a gray area. Ang importante may court approval. Eh. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the court using its not just facilities, expertise, but the court can even order a psychiatrist or child to, psychologist to, to evaluate yeah. a child or the social worker, social worker to make yeah. a child cause to be study. Right. Mm -hmm. So they will take into account all of those. Okay. Let's take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these reminders. Tonight, we are featuring some of our best episodes since our one year of airing. That's right, and since we aired, we featured a lot of programs and services provided by the government because really, there are a lot of questions when it comes to government services, and we try to tackle them one by one. Uh, who could apply for Pagibig Loans? Uh, we all know that it's a contribution system, a saving system, as mentioned in the, the VTR. No? So, can you tell us uh, how the system works okay. and uh, who can apply for a loan? Okay, so uh, a Pag-IBIG member mm -hmm. who are Pag-IBIG fund members, so uh, all SSS members, so from the private sector, also GSIS members, so from the government service, self-employed uh, should be Pag-IBIG fund members. 
uh, overseas Filipino workers are also Pag-ibig Fund members. So any Pag-ibig Fund member who has 24 monthly total savings with Pag-ibig Fund, so that means uh, 200 pesos per month mm -hmm. times, um, times, times uh, 24, 24. 24. Uh, that person will already be eligible for a Pag-ibig Fund housing loan. Now, if we are talking about the multi-purpose loan, because we have different uh, products, we have housing loan, which is the principal product of Pag-ibig Fund. We have the multi-purpose loan, and we also have the calamity loan. So for the multi-purpose loan and calamity loan, the eligibility is that um, the member should be contributing for at least two years mm -hmm. so that uh, we can already say something about the regularity of their payments. Okay. Then they can avail of uh, the loan, which is up to 80% of their total savings. So for example, if they have already saved 10,000 pesos mm -hmm. in Pag-ibig Fund, they can borrow uh, 8,000 pesos for the multi-purpose so loan. Mm -hmm. 80%. I think it's easier for those that are employed, either in the private or public sector, because the employers have the obligation means that they nagbabawas and they give it to Pag-ibig. But if you're self-employed or an OFW, of course, working for a foreign company na hindi naman communicate with Pag-ibig, how do you make sure that you're part of this system? Okay, so you are correct in your observation. So that's why, uh, and also we have links with SSS and GSIS and BIR and also the local government units for uh, which are the businesses and we require for their uh, employees to be members of Pag-ibig Fund. Now, it's a different challenge for us to make sure that our OFWs and the self-employed uh, the professionals also become our members. So how do we ensure that? So we also partnered with POEA to make sure, for example, for our OFWs, everyone who leaves the country uh, will be required by POEA to update their Pag-ibig contribution or to make sure uh, that, they, that they are members and they update their contributions. Once they're out of the country, we also have linked with the uh, Department of Labor, with the labor attache in our embassy so that every OFW who is returning to the country will also be required to update their Pag-ibig contribution. Mm -hmm. Now, with the um, self-employed, we have partnered with a lot of banks, uh, uh, remittance facilities, agencies, so that, for example, anyone who has a credit card that's po powered by Visa or MasterCard can just pay online. Uh, you just go to our website, the pagibigfund.gov.ph, and they could um, pay through their credit cards oh. the monthly contribution. So, right. but it's a different challenge because they don't have the employer. Uh, if uh, they don't have the employer who has the obligation to remit to us the uh, their contribution. Mm -hmm. There was an expanded expanded Senior Citizens Act. Can yes. you tell us what the highlights are of this act? compared to the previous laws? Yes, uh, one of the highlights is the exemption from EVAT. So, wala expanded value wala added na, tax? Wala na. Uh, prior to that, uh, we, we thought we, we were receiving 20% uh, discounts, pero mm -hmm. yung pala, uh, there was an additional... 12%? 12% uh, uh, EVAT na ipinapatong. So, mm -hmm. But how do you even na take that out, considering if you buy, to the, if you go to the grocery, automatic na factor in na yung EVAT. So for if you're a senior citizen, how can you enjoy this benefit? Uh, meron silang computation yan actually sa ano sa sa mga supermarket. Uh, sa supermarkets. Okay. Meron silang computation na uh, inaalis nila yung EVAT, yung mm -hmm. factor ni EVAT oh, para okay. yan. So if you're doing the grocery, you should present your senior citizen's ID. Yes. Mm -hmm. But other benefits that uh, are very applicable talaga to senior citizens. Medicines. Yes. Ano yung Important, yeah. discount Some medicines, and how do you get it? Yes, 20% discount sa uh, mga, mga essential medicines. Mm, essential. essential. You mean, kasama medicines. po ba vitamins siya? Um, hindi po. Mm, ah, hindi okay. kasama. Oh. Unless, unless yung vitamins na yan ay specifically prescribed, prescribed. By, your mm. by your physician para sa kanya para sa treatment see, okay. sa prevention mm -hmm. o kaya ano ng ng older person. Now ma'am kasama din ba yung it, it, it involves mga services no? So it includes of course restaurants? Yes. Yeah, restaurants. So, mm -hmm. Ako personally I experienced that Me when too, I, I mean, with I'm, my parents. With my parents? Yeah. No? Uh, and and normally uh, uh, ano ba yung policy diyan ma'am? Uh, ano lang yung kinain nila specifically or do we kinare kung lima kami and we have my parents, my two parents, do we does it make, do we make it we divide it by five times multiply by two yung yung discount nila parang ganun? 
Kapag ang order ay uh, bulk o kaya yung parang uh, family, family style, style. kanyan, uh -huh. uh, usually ang restaurant uh, would divide the amount, uh, the bill, uh, by five by and five. then uh, i-allocate doon sa dalawang order person. Sa How much is the bills. discount for restaurant bills? 20%. 20%. Malaki rin, no? Malaki 20%. Well, that's all the time that we have. We have featured some of the best episodes and snippets of episodes here in Legal Help Desk, and uh, the best is yet to come. We'd like to thank all our guests and all our case studies for making the past year special. I'm attorney Rod Nipomuseno. And I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. We'd also like to thank our viewers who share their experiences with us mm -hmm. and ask for our help via Twitter and Facebook pages. And good news, starting December 2, Legal HD is already for one hour. That wow. means we can answer more questions and Perfect. give more legal advice. That's great. And our new time slot is 7 p.m. All right, looking forward to that. Yes. So if you have questions, just send us your comments or messages directly, and we will try to address them as best as we can. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.